uh, to go and hear her in person after having read her book together this summer. Uh, again, our silent auction will be back this fall. Uh, we'll be hosting that event on November 2nd. I know that that is still a ways away, but we are inviting you now to be thinking about those things that you might have to have to offer to that auction, uh, whether those are sports tickets, badger tickets that you might not be able to use, or theater tickets, or um, your own artwork, whether that art happens in a wood shop, or a craft room, or the kitchen, um, all of those things are uh, great options for donations for that silent auction. And so invite you to be thinking about that, but also to put November 2nd on your calendar and to plan to be with us that evening uh, for some fun and fellowships and that silent auction. Um, as you probably have heard by now, our custodian, Carl, um, who has been here for the last three years, has resigned. And we are in the process of looking for a new custodian. Um, Carl's last day is today, uh, and we do not yet have someone new hired. So if you have a little extra time and wouldn't mind uh, lending a hand around here, either cleaning some bathrooms or doing a little light vacuuming to help us stay on top of things in the interim, um, please reach out to me and let me know, and we'll kind of coordinate a schedule to make sure that those things are still happening on a regular <laughs> basis until we find someone. Um, on that note, if you know of anyone who might be interested in that position, please let us know. Um, we do have a lead on someone who is interested and that process is moving forward. So um, if you know of anyone who might also be interested, please get their information to me as soon as possible. Um, you will notice today in our prayers that we are lifting up uh, Jerry Dilly. He is Mark Dilly's father, and he passed away last weekend. Uh, so we remember Mark and his mom, Ruth, and their whole family in our prayers today. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we join together in our confession and forgiveness. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We, we confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The, the cravings that war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven.
Let us pray. O oh God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation. And by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 50. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear. And I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. <clears throat> the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have to set my face like flint and know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsive reading is from Psalms 116, verses 1 through 9. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the, the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came with grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought low and God saved me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt well with you. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading is from James chapter 3, verse 1 through 12. A reading from James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes and speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into our mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of greater exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and itself sets on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessings and cursings. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. 
Does the spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield all of the grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Taken as compliments. 
But I also wonder if some of the disciples were brave enough to mention some of the other things that they were likely hearing on the streets. Some say you're a madman, a heretic, a fraud. Some say you're just the carpenter's son from Nazareth. Others don't really care who you are, they just don't like you. Maybe some of those things, both good and bad, had crossed their own minds, and they hid their own ponderings behind that old standby, some people are saying, rather than claiming those ideas for their own. Maybe they're just testing the waters in that way. How will Jesus react to hearing that people people say that he is John the Baptist. The disciples say that someone else said that, and they're right, they can celebrate, but if they're wrong, you won't have to know that that's what they were thinking too. But if that was their plan, they don't get away with it for very long, because Jesus then asks them the hard question, but who do you say that I am? Enough with what other people are saying. You are my disciples. You've been following me, learning from me, serving with me. Who do you say that I am? And then it seems like very few people have anything to say. This one is riskier. Do you pronounce your belief with conviction? Or are you doubting what you think? It's one thing to tell Jesus what other people are saying. It's something altogether different to tell Jesus what you believe about who he is. What if you aren't right? What if you had already floated your idea when he asked what other people were saying? There appears to be just one disciple who has an answer at all. Peter, who quickly responds, you are the Messiah. Well, we don't hear it in Mark's gospel. In the other gospels, Jesus is quick to point out that God, it is God's revelation that helped Peter come to that understanding. But no matter how Peter came to that conclusion, it has been spoken aloud. Peter has made the bold declaration that Jesus is the Messiah. Dr. Anna Carter Florence writes, for each of us, I think the moment comes when people, what, when what people say about Jesus is no longer enough. We can't hide behind it. We can't pretend it's ours. We can't substitute what people say for what we say. We have to listen closely to God and speak up for ourselves. That's precisely what Peter seems to have done in this moment. He has boldly stepped forward and declared who he believes Jesus to be, the Messiah. But then Jesus begins to explain to all of his disciples exactly what it will mean for him to be the Messiah. He will undergo great suffering and be rejected by chief priests and scribes. He'll be killed and after three days rise again. And none of that matched what Peter had expected in a Messiah. So he pulls Jesus aside. Hey, I, I really do think you are the Messiah, but all this stuff about suffering and dying, yeah, that doesn't really fit into my picture of what a Messiah is, so let's just not talk about that stuff, okay? As we know, Jesus most definitely is not okay with that plan. Just moments after Peter makes this bold declaration of who Jesus is, Jesus challenges him, tells Peter to get behind him, calls him Satan. Jesus knows what it will mean for him to be the Messiah, and it isn't necessarily the kind of the Messiah that people were watching and waiting for. Peter had made this bold declaration, but then he had to set aside his idea of what that really meant and let Jesus teach him what kind of Messiah Jesus would be. So what about you? Who do you say that Jesus is? Does that answer come quickly for you? Is it what you have heard others say about Jesus? Or is it an understanding that you have come to through God's revelation to you? 
We've had that conversation a lot this summer in our book study group. As I mentioned in the announcements, we read Diana Butler Bass's Freeing Jesus. And she recounts the different ways that she has experienced Jesus in her life. As friend, as teacher, savior, lord, way, and presence. And while our group could relate to some of her descriptions of who Jesus was, some of them didn't always land solidly for all of us, and the others didn't feel right at all. And in our discussion, we found that there were other words that we would use to describe Jesus that weren't in the book. Comforter, guide, companion, beloved. Who we each understand Jesus to be will likely shift throughout <laughs> our lives. We also sometimes settle into that favorite title for Jesus, especially those from Scripture, but then fail to consider what it really means to call Jesus by that title. As Carter Florence continues, confessing that Jesus is the Messiah like Peter does is only the first step. Then we have to let Jesus teach us what kind of Messiah he is. Not one who will fight and win for us, but one who will suffer and die for us. One who will teach us what it is to serve rather than to conquer, to give rather than to take, to love rather than hold anything back. Jesus is a different kind of Messiah than we were expecting. And he always will be. Coming to a place where we can say who we believe Jesus to be is not an end point. Because even with a specific word or description in mind, we are just at the beginning of fully understanding all that Jesus is. And how we may embody those titles in different ways than we might expect. Who is Jesus for you? As we live into that question, as we grow in our understanding of who Jesus is, and as the central pieces of who Jesus is for us shifts throughout our lives, Jesus promises to love us with a life-giving love. As we come to a deeper understanding of who Jesus is, we do so in the safe embrace of the one who does keep his mind on divine things who keeps us in his heart. Jesus is love and life for you and for me. So keep wondering. Keep pondering the question. Keep learning about the depth of who Jesus is. Jesus invites us to do so and guides us into new life while we're still figuring it out. Thanks be to God.
words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We pray for the church throughout the world. Form us into communities of forgiveness and grace. Help us to notice where you are calling us into new relationships and give us courage to embrace the uncomfortable and the unfamiliar. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. <clears throat> we pray for the earth and all its inhabitants. Protect lands at risk of wildfire and heal dying forests. Where fire brings destruction, raise up new growth. Where hurricanes have brought destruction and flooding, bring sunshine and restoration. Guide us in, t in tending precarious ecosystems. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who govern nations, tribes, and cities. Open them to the cries of people in need. Direct them in shaping policies that prioritize the health and well-being of all who struggle with hunger and housing insecurity. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who are ill, all who are lonely or anxious, and all who grieve, especially the family of Jerry Dilly, Diane, Kathleen, Mary, Jean, Barb, Patty, Larry, John, and all those we name before you now aloud or silently. Draw them close to you and soothe them with the promise of your endearing love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for teachers, professors, librarians, school administrators, staff, and all who support the education of young people. Sustain them as they shape learning communities rooted in equity and authenticity. We pray for children of all ages in their learning. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We remember our beloved dead, especially Jerry Dilley, who with a great cloud of witnesses bear witness to your saving grace. Accompany us in our pilgrimage of faith, that we too place our hope and trust in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, O Holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share signs of peace with one another. God's peace.
Everyone is welcome at this table. Come on, you broken, wounded who believe. Come, the feast of love is ready and waiting. Open your hearts.
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to his table. Come. Here is your